What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So it's that time of the week. It's time for the week rotation. And this is one of those rare weeks that I literally wore something for during the day and something out the shower. Because lately, I've been kind of sporadic with my out the shower fragrances. Uh, and it wasn't just freshies and weak stuff out the shower. I wore some heavier stuff. You'll see as we go through it, there's a lot of variety. Stuff I would typically wear during the daytime this time of year that I was wearing out the shower just kind of really been reaching for a variety of things and that's indeed the theme of this there's a lot of variety here so it's week number 207 in the weekly rotation so stay tuned So moving into Sunday, we've got some goodies, both during the day and in the evening out the shower. But one I've been meaning to reach for that kind of blew me away uh, in a live stream where Dedrick and Randy had sent me some decants not that long ago, a few weeks back. And I had to get a bottle of Mancera Black Gold, another special, special fragrance from them that a lot of viewers over the years have told me I would absolutely enjoy. And you guys were right for those of you that said that. This particular fragrance has an aquatic tone, a lot of like a uh, rich, earthy, like violet, not just super powdery bomb of violet. Um, it's not necessarily that petroleum, like your Fahrenheit kind of violet, but somewhere, it falls somewhere in between uh, with the typical powdery violet and that, like I said, aquatic tone, citruses. There's some dark patchouli smell to this. There's some earthiness, has this kind of moist patchouli, kind of leathery facet to it. Very interesting stuff. Uh, it kind of gives me a similar vibe to Aqua de Joe Profumo. Not the same scent profile, but like a niche take on it in many ways. Like there's more complexity, there's more depth, the oils used are a little bit higher quality. Performance is phenomenal. Like this is a deep, rich, pretty dark scent for what it is. Saying black gold, that's an interesting name for this fragrance because it's dark for sure, but... I think gold fits it really well because it's kind of a gem that people in the community know about, but I don't know how the masses are with this one, but very special fragrance, one that I'm going to be working on a full review for. I need to spend a little bit more time with it before I can do that video because through the month of December, I'll be doing more individual reviews on Mancera, and this is one of the first ones that is going to come out because this is special stuff. If you haven't gotten your nose on this yet, it's an interesting experience uh, for the better. It's Mancera Black Gold during the day. And then when I got the shower, it was time for a shave, and I decided to go with Zaharoff's Signature Tobacco Shave Set, and of course that means I gave myself a few sprays of the fragrance. Love this stuff. Way more sprays than I need out the shower, especially with a pretty strong aftershave splash. Do like five, four or five sprays of this, which is way too much. Don't need that out the shower, but you want to talk about a magnificent scent bubble in Siage to wind down and relax in the evening. Cigar lounge type of stuff. Gentlemanly quality and smell. It's, it's luxurious without being too serious. Big fan. There's sweetness. There's woods. There's smokiness. There's booziness. There's a little bit of everything going on here with this aromatic leafy tobacco that it has. One of the better tobacco scents out there. Definitely worth checking out. And it was great to shave with the shave set. Out the shower, Zaharoff Signature Tobacco. So moving into Monday was a live stream uh, to celebrate my recent milestone of hitting 100,000 subscribers. For those of you that are seeing this now that maybe just saw, holy crap, you hit 100K or weren't involved in that live stream. Thank you, seriously, all of you. None of this would be a thing without any of you guys. Um, so I wanted to wear something special to commemorate the moment and to celebrate. So it was a natural, easy move to go with my first collaboration with Zaharoff. This is called Business Over Pleasure. As you can see, it has my logo on the bottom, as well as the Zaharoff logo on the top. A gorgeous shade of blue, by the way. There's a playing card with myself and George Zaharoff on the back. Uh, it was a very casino-like theme, because it's all about choosing business. First and foremost, the professional type of scent profiles, professional settings. Citrus, fresh spice, a nice Sichuan pepper hit in the top. A little bit of a crisp, yet creamy ginger. Powdery iris. Kind of a smoky, creamy, Palo Santo, Gaiac wood combination, a little bit of amber and musk. Very smooth, very soothing, very versatile, easygoing, inoffensive with depth and quality. For the office, it was built for a professional setting. That's what it was for. And uh, 
I was very fortunate to work with Claude Deere to bring this idea and story that I wanted to tell to life. So it was just a, you know, it seemed like the perfect fit to commemorate the moment. So during the day, my first co collaboration was Zaharoff called Business Over Pleasure. Now I got the shower. Haven't reached for this one in a while. Wife definitely told me I smelled great with Mont Blanc Explorer because she is a huge fan of this scent profile. Uh, many times over the last two years, I would say, let's say three out of every five times, she'll say, you should wear that more. I love how that smells. Didn't happen this time, but it happens more times than not, you know. Beautiful citrus and broxen freshness. It has a little bit of this dark, tart, almost smoky-like feel to it, even though there's no smoky notes. Uh, has a leathery feel, and I don't think there's a leathery accord here either with this kind of oddball Akigala wood uh, note that offers this strange woody kind of almost maybe that's contributing to that leathery facet that I get from this. I don't know, but it's a great versatile fragrance. You can wear this one year round. I prefer to wear it in the fall personally, but I mean, you can wear this in any season. It's signature scent worthy type stuff. Basically, Mont Blanc's Aventus. It's how you can look at it. So out the shower, I was definitely smelling great with Mont Blanc Explorer. Moving into Tuesday, this is one I haven't reached for in a little while. I talked about it recently uh, in a seasonal video. It's some good stuff. Wife definitely complimented this one. Pretty strong on my skin with Dracar Intense from Guy La Roche. Uh, 2022 release. Beginning of 2022, you can get this one for 20 some odd dollars for 100 ml. That's good stuff, guys. It really is. The way the absinthe comes across, it's not just like a lime citric kind of hit. It offers a little bit of a boozy feel with that spicy aromatic barbershop style. A little bit of vanilla and oak moss as it dries down. It's like a typical spicy aromatic barbershop type fragrance with a few more modern nuances to it. Uh, to where it doesn't smell like dated or anything. Which I don't really think barbershop fragrances smell dated myself. But I know some do. Great performer, too, for the money, I gotta say. If you like this style of fragrance, this is a really good, affordable, cheapy option, if you will. So don't sleep on this one. It doesn't get any love. It was nice to revisit during the day. Dracar Intense from Guy La Roche. Now, one that, believe it or not, for those of you that have been around the online fragrance community for a few years, there was a time when this was super hyped as a $20 fragrance. And I never got around to it. I just recently bought the original and the newly released Intense. But this is the original Rocha Sman. Uh, weird ass bottle. Some people reference a uh, sex toy kind of thing. I like to call it more of like a light bright peg. It reminds me more of a light bright peg. But it's a weird sweet creamy cappuccino type of fragrance. That one of two things happened here. It's either so heavily reformulated that it's that weak. Or I just go really anosmic nose blind very quickly to this one it does smell great though a little bit of spice but i said sweet creamy cappuccino i believe cappuccino is actually the note that's in here it has that sweet cream coffee type of smell if you will more of like an iced coffee kind of thing than anything else i don't really drink cappuccinos i relate it to more to iced coffee which i don't really drink my wife drinks that so i'm familiar with that type of smell caramel iced caramel macchiatos that's her thing um, this kind of reminds me of that scent profile a little bit. Uh, there's some, a lot of different things going on, but that's the main thing I get from it. It's pretty simplistic, even though the note breakdown shows a little bit of complexity. Not really a complex scent, in my opinion. I understand why this was hyped for such a long time. For the money, it's not bad. A couple, couple bucks over $20 still, and you can get this one. And it's kind of a moment in time for the internet fragrance community's history, because this was one of the original super hype cheapies here in this online community uh but it's nothing special i haven't wore the intense i did a first impressions on both i did like the intense more it does smell like this just intensified stronger in many ways uh i'll get to that one eventually but you know it's okay nothing special like i said i'm probably going anosmic to it but maybe it's just that week I, i'm sure somebody in the comments will say nah bro it's just that week and we might both be getting an Osmia. Who knows? But during the day, I finally got around to wearing one of the original cheapy hype beasts in the community, Rocious Man. Moving into Wednesday, I still don't know where to categorize this. Do I categorize it as luxury niche? Do I categorize it as higher level designer, maybe? Because it's priced pretty high. Uh, I think it's the best of the house. And I think it's one of the better releases of 2023. It's Toomey's newest fragrance called 19 Degree. This is a good one. They have this birch water accord. It smells like fresh water and smokiness. Leather, 
a little bit of sweetness. It's woodsy. It's got this black raspberry note that offers this not so sweet, kind of tart, dark, and fruity note to it. Um, a lot of people are comparing it to Aventus. I understand where people are coming from with that. It does walk a similar path, but it's not some pineapple heavy, you know, the birch I think is the biggest tie in here with a little bit of citrus fruitiness at the top and the birch and the leathery smell. Cause even though Aventus doesn't list the leathery accord, it has a leathery facet in certain batch formulations. Cause the batch game is a real thing with Aventus. I will give people that that's a real thing. Um, but this, I think it more so stands on its own. Maybe it's their version of Aventus is how you can look at it, but kind of like this more. See, it's so interesting because it's, it's got a strong wa freshwater accord to it, which is a big separator between the two fragrances. And that black raspberry note, it's a unique fruitiness that I don't think I've really come across before. I could have swore it was maybe black currant the first time I sprayed it because it had a tartness to it more so than a sweetness without being like inky or metallic like black currant can come across sometimes. This is a beautiful offering. This is absolutely worth a sample. In the link below, you can get a sample for like six bucks. It's expensive to get a bottle. Sample it, definitely sample it first. It's way too expensive to just roll the dice, but I am not your financial advisor. Do whatever the hell you want, but try this one. If you look at the notes, if you hear anything about it that maybe intrigues you, I would strongly encourage you to sample this one because like I said before, uh, it's pretty impressive to me and I think it's one of the better releases of the year during the day the new to me 19 degree and then when I got out the shower and to me this is the smell of the early 2000s this is Ralph Lauren polo double black patchouli a little bit of spice some musk but mainly mango and coffee oh yeah this is such a 2005 kind of scent profile it's so good. It reminds me of those days, my early 20s. This thing was super popular during those, you know, early to mid 2000 to late, just the 2000s in general. This is like the smell of it to me. So good. Um, I had somebody in the comments of my Sin Day posts. So this is one of those I'm here for a good time, but not here for a long time kind of fragrances. I think that's a great way to look at this because it is not the strongest fragrance. Again, we could be suffering from anosmia, but I think it's like four hours and it's gone. But after about, like, let's call it 45 minutes, because you can split the difference sometimes, half an hour, sometimes an hour, of real good projection that I get from it before it sits pretty close to the skin. So not some performance monster, more of a nostalgia play with a beautiful aroma to me. But I'm fine with three or four hours of longevity. I don't wear fragrances or buy fragrances based on their performance and longevity. I buy them and wear them based on how they smell. I don't mind reapplying if I'm digging the way something's smelling and that's how I am with this. So guys my, around my age from my generation will more than likely be familiar with this because they've probably had a bout with it even if just a small sample at some point in the 2000s because it's a moment in time kind of fragrance. So out the shower, walking down memory lane with Ralph Lauren's Polo Double Black. Moving into Thursday, I was so impressed by this. I did a first impressions video. The next day, I threw it in the rotation. I had to wear it. It's supposedly a clone of Kaoli's uh, Yum Pistachio Gelato. This is Paris Corner's version called Cahair Pistachio. Cahar? Cahair? Not sure. I would assume Cahair? I don't know. But it smells incredible. Has a little bit of booziness from this sweet rum note that they're listing. Uh, a lot of spice early on. Of course, it has that pistachio ice cream kind of smell, pistachio gelato. I know gelato and ice cream are two different things, but they have similar texture. Whipped cream, cotton candy, cocoa, just so much sweet. But the thing for me, it sounds like it's just going to be this sweet, delicious dessert, like crazy sweet type of fragrance. And at first, it kind of is. There is some balance with the booziness and the spice, but I get a lot of like fresh minty and floral from this. I think it's the geranium giving me that minty effect. This is a beautiful fragrance. I've never smelled the original, but this as a standalone, it's magnificent. This is one that uh, the household can enjoy. Very much a couple's fragrance. Perfectly unisex with the feminine lean to it, so guys that enjoy florals or sweet notes and such, I think will really enjoy this. I think it smells phenomenal. Definitely going to continue to reach for this one here and there, but performance was really good on it too. I got to say, not a beast by any means, but above average kind of stuff. Seven, eight hours kind of thing before I find it really fell off a cliff as a, you know, barely a skin scent at that point, but projected really well for about two hours. So during the day, 
one of the newer releases from Paris Corner. This is Cahair Pistachio. And then when I got out the shower, I just featured it in a tag video that I did. And, uh, yeah, I had to wear it. I was in the mood for it. I did four sprays around the neck. It's way more performance than I typically like out the shower, as a lot of these were this week. But Zaharoff Signature Coco Loco. A lot of Zaharoff uh, reaches this particular week. Just kind of worked out that way. Love the offerings from the house. What can I say? Bowl of fruits, red currant, pineapple, some coconut. But the biggest thing for me in this opening is the vibrance and brightness of this spicy cardamom note that they have. A little bit of heliotrope, blonde cedar, some musk, some vanilla, things like that. Oh, but the biggest star of the show is that bowl of fruits with cardamom on it. Ugh, the opening is so good on this one. Such a fun and vibrant fragrance. Vibrance is the key to this scent profile. It's vibrant in color. It's vibrant in juice color. It's a baby blue color juice as well. It's all about colors and uh, Carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Really captures it. I've never been there before, but if you look at the lights and the pictures and footage... This totally seems like it would be an aroma that would really work with Carnival down there. Uh, the sights, the sounds, and so on. This would probably be one of the smells. So, excellent work by Zaharoff. I love it. It's my favorite release from George this year, even over Orem. Man, it was just, it, it had been a little while since I wore it. So, it was nice to revisit. Out the shower, Zaharoff, signature Coco Loco. Moving into Friday, today. I'm recording this on Friday. Um, it was nice to reach for this one. Uh, I was originally not going to do any content today, but, you know, it's later in the evening. I'm about to shower in a little bit. I, I kind of got in the mood to film the weekend rotation. What can I say? So I reached for this. It was a gloomy, rainy, slightly chilly kind of day. So I went with Brioni Eau de Parfum Intense. Now, this is actually my first wearing. I've had it for a while now. I've just been waiting for the right season, fall, winter time. Suits this really well. Has a beautiful fruity sweetness, kind of a leathery, dry wood, oody type of smell to it. Uh, the opening's a little a little in your face, but it settles in beautifully. Almost majestic in many ways, the way this comes across. This is a good fragrance. This is a really good fragrance. The whole line's really good, in my opinion. At the recording of this, there's four fragrances available, and they're all good. This one, you definitely get that fruitiness, kind of that slight Fahrenheit feel that the original Eau de Parfum has. Intensity is ramped up for sure with this hefty, leathery facet. Like I said, that dry, slightly funked synthetic oud oil that they used here. Oh man, it's a little warm, but it still managed to be quite fresh in the top. It's got really good performance. I'm digging it. First full wearing, it gets a thumbs up from me. So during the day on Friday, Brioni Eau de Parfum Intense. And then I am going to be jumping in the shower after I finish recording this. And I have been sitting, having this sitting on my desk for a little while, and I'm wearing it tonight. John Barbados and Nick Jonas Crimson. I think this is the best of the three. This is the red bottle, burgundy bottle, whatever you'd like to call it. This is cranberry. I believe there's a little bit of rum here is the boozy note, if I'm not mistaken, because it's nice and fruity and boozy in the top. So beautiful. I get like six hours of longevity. You know, John Barbados, they're not known for being powerhouse fragrances, but they are known for being good fragrances. Oh, and this is a good one. And not some serious, like, alcoholic beverage, mature type of scent. This is fun. This is playful. This is great for the season at hand. A great autumn fragrance, especially in the evenings. It's warm, fruity, and boozy is basically how you can look at it with decent performance. Nothing spectacular as far as that, but... I really dig the scent. So out the shower here tonight on Friday is going to be John Barbados and Nick Jonas Crimson. Finally on Saturday, at the recording of this, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. So I've been having this one on the on the dresser. I mean, not the dresser, the desk for a little bit now. I've been wanting to revisit it again. It's been, you know, maybe three weeks since the last time I reached for it. This is one of my favorite releases of the year. Uh, independent luxury niche house. It's doing great work, guys. Maison Daba. Silent Night. Such a fan of this. The plum here is more of an authentic, not overly sweet, but very juicy type of plum. You have some beautiful spice, a nice dry woody nuance that doesn't dry out the fragrance too much with some florals. It's not overly deep and complex, but you can tell it's such a smooth, harmonious blend from start to finish. The, tra the transitions uh, of different nuance kind of just smoothly go from one to the next all the way into the deep dry down for many, many hours. 
this is such a great fragrance for the time of year. It's cozy, it's inviting, it pretty much has a nice mass appeal to it. I can't imagine too many people not liking the way this smells. Uh, such a great offering from them. Such an unsung hero niche release this year that gets its share of shine on social media, but not enough, in my opinion, for how good this fragrance actually is. Uh, definitely one I, I'm excited to wear tomorrow because we're going to have some chilly weather. It's going to be just right for the situation. Beautiful stuff. I would strongly encourage you to check this one out. Obviously, I have a link below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I just want people to get their nose on this one. I think it's that good, especially if you like plum spices and woods. A little touch of floral. It's not really all that floral. Just That's the main takeaways from this fragrance. Superb quality, too. During the day is going to be Maison Dava's Silent Night. And then when I get out the shower, I um, might end up shaving tonight, but I'm probably going to hold off one more day. And when I do, we're going with Aqua Velva Classic Ice Blue. Man, this is some good stuff. This is throwback right here. This is throwback, firms and tones, 100 years. And as far as the fragrance, I'm going to go with Paris Corners of Chaos in the Ocean, uh, Mega Mayor Clone, super salty, musky, sharp and astringent, aquatic. This is good stuff. Man, it does come across as like, oh, wow, that's crazy sharp and synthetic. When you wear it a few times and you let it dry down and you go through the motions with it, you start to understand more that it's just astringent. It's not necessarily overtly, you know, just crazy synthetic. Like the first time I sprayed it, I was like, ooh, that's a chemical smell. No, it's just that sharp. Everything about it is sharp. It's intense. I have to say, I quite like that about it. Uh, is it the best aquatic I've ever smelled? No, but I think it's some really good stuff that I am in the mood to wear. And I think it's going to pair quite well with the iciness of... Ice Blue Classic from Aqua Velva. So that's the plan for Saturday. Out the shower, we're going to have a good shave. Aqua Velva Classic Ice, Ice Blue and a Chaos in the Ocean from Paris Corner. Well, that's the rotation. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. So what you guys wear this week? Some of you that are regulars, you know the routine. Comment down below. I love to read what you guys have been wearing. There's always that random situation where I might match with somebody. It doesn't have to be on the same day, but it has happened on the same day. But uh, just to see what you guys are wearing. It's my favorite format outside of my live streams to do. As far as recorded videos, this is my favorite recorded format to do on this channel. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the ones I wore this week and you get them to spray now, I think there's a pretty good chance you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.